going to call to order the Finance Committee meeting for October the 3rd, 2017. Our first item on the agenda would be a special recognition of the Employee of the Month by our Mayor. Please join me down front, Council, if you would, and we'll uh, present for Eileen Van Kirk. Eileen has uh, been working for the City of Muskogee for eight and a half years with the Youth Volunteer Corps program and directs the program at the Teen Center. In addition to her regular duties, Eileen represents the Parks and Recs Department on several youth uh, and several youth serving boards, including Sir Optimus International and the Community Anti-Drug Network. Youth Volunteer Corps keeps her busy in the community, including on evenings and weekends. Yeah. And that's true. Eileen loves working uh, with youth and says they have a fresh perspective on things and it is exciting to see them as emerging adults. She believes the youth have a lot to offer and likes to help them discover what they can offer the community. This is the paragraph you all are going to be amazed. Oh. Eileen has recently taken on the hobby of raising chickens and considers herself a new chicken farmer. My grandson would like to get some advice on raising chickens and raising chickens that lay eggs too. She also likes to garden and read and be outdoors. Eileen has 12 grandchildren, seven children, and her first great grandchild was born in August. Congratulations on being employee of the month. You just do an outstanding job and there's a bunch of things in here I didn't know about you. They're kind of fun. Do you want to say something? I love my job home at the city of Muskogee, and I have all the support that I could want through the city and through the parks department. Everybody is so good to the kids at the teen center and the youth volunteer corps, and it's a pleasure to do this for you. Thank you so much. If you'll come around and shake hands with everybody, we'll just tell you how much we appreciate you. How much is a dozen eggs from your uh, free range chicken group? Right now, a million dollars because I only have seven eggs. <laughs> <laughs> You're precious. We'll let you know, but, but we're working on it. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of September 19th, 2017. After reviewing the minutes, are there any corrections or additions? Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Gulley. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Vance. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number one passed. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments September 14, 2017 through September 27, 2017. Do we have a report from the Purchasing Committee? The Purchasing Committee met earlier today and reviewed the, the report of claims and I move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the claims. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number two passed. Item number three, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2704, declaring three parcels of property more particularly described in the resolution as surplus to the needs of the city and authorize the conveyance of said properties or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, we are requesting approval of a resolution declaring three parcels of property as surplus to the needs of the city. Parcels one and two is located on the southwest corner of Fifth and Tamaroy Street. We received one bid. The bid was from a Marcus Smith in the amount of $726, and that's for both parcels. The third piece of property is located at North E in Dayton. It's actually behind 419 Dayton. 
the property owner at 419 Dayton uh, submitted a bid for $363, and that was the only bid we received. So we are recommending approval of the resolution. Glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Garvin? Move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. <coughs> yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number three passed. Item number four, please. Consider approval to accept the proposal from Tyler Technologies for a time and attendance system and authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract for the same or take other necessary action. Ms. Kelly. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, first, I wanted to say that this is something that I have been anticipating and hoping for for a very long time, and I wanted to thank the city manager and each of you for setting aside funding in the budget this year, because um, I think it's something that's going to be a great program for the city. Um, this is a time and attendance, attendance system. Um, we went through a RFP process. We had um, put out right after the budget year, so in July, we offered um, respondents to submit their proposals back to us. Us. We received nine respondents back. We shortlisted that based on um, the ability to integrate with our current HTE system. We use HTE Navaline, um, and it is a very difficult system for um, for what we the use that we need it for. Um, so one of the key factors in this, actually two, one was budget, and two was the integration with HTE. We shortlisted that down to four companies who were able to what we thought integrate with HTE. From there, we did a question and answer session, and we then narrowed it down to three um, of the top companies. W then we had um, demonstrations from those, and we narrowed it down to the top two, which were um, Novatime and Executime or Tyler Technologies. Um, from there, we graded each of those, um, and we came up with the top respondent of Tyler Technologies. We would like to ask for approval for the city manager to um, negotiate and execute the agreement for this. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm sure you may have some. It's, um, it's a program that is utilized um, for our employees. We're hoping to do biometric or fingerprint scanning in the fields for them to enter their time. In addition, we will have workstations set up for employees in the office um, who can clock in and out on, the, on those systems. Um, they will be able to um, request um, time off from the system it itself. Um, instead of using leave paper slips, um, they will be able to utilize um, the computers for those requests as well. Um, it's very, very simple. The supervisors will go in, approve their time. Um, when an, an employee makes a request for time off, it will send an email to the supervisor um, for those time off requests. They will not have a dozen pieces of paper to go through and sign. Um, they simply will go in the system and select and approve or select and decline. Um, after payroll is all said and done, it is a simple click um, of a button to import that into our current system of HTE. Um, my payroll coordinator and I, we went to Broken Arrow today. Um, we just returned and we watched their payroll um, be uploaded and it was simply a click of a button to import it to HTE um, to run the normal payroll cycle. Um, wonderful program. Um, it will save our payroll coordinators in each department a significant amount of time because they will no longer have to process those individual time cards one by one. Everything will be done on system and it'll integrate with HTE. Time will be calculated and will be done. So happy to answer any questions and I recommend approval. What kind of backups do you have for this system in case it goes down? Chris Cummings will be able to answer those questions for you. The uh, system we're proposing is itself is cloud-based, so it would be with the company. They would maintain the backups of the actual system itself. What we were looking at is what happens if uh, the network, if there's a network outage at a site with a time clock, and the time clocks will hold uh, several weeks' worth of time to, uh, so if, if network's out for a few hours, it's going to cache it, and then it'll, it'll dump it when the network comes back up. If it's something that's uh, pretty severe, where we might be days without the network at that location, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to, uh, it'll still cache it and bring it in. If we have to bring the time into the system with a network down situation, we'll be able to use a hotspot to uh, sync that time clock or time clocks up with the system. So the system itself will be backed up uh, on, in the cloud and in the, the uh, time clocks backup processes are, are available. Okay, thank you. 
the background information said it was within the budget. How close within the budget is there? We anticipate it being below the estimate um, estimate in the budget. Um, included in that, we're hoping to, uh, to also get the um, advanced scheduling system for the police department. Um, so that is also included in that, and we will still be hopefully below um, the budgeted number. Um, of course, still based on negotiations by the contract, um, but well below that, including all of the information um, and um, accessories that Chris will need to do their IT stuff. Mm -hmm. And why I was asking that, we're going through that with the school system, and when you, when you initially go into it, you just never see all the cost and all the satellites and all the pieces you're going to need. So we you um, always want to make sure and have some reserve. Cause, yes. So I'm appreciate that and one of the background. questions that I asked during that during the reference period was what are some of the anticipated costs um, that we should look for and there were no hidden fees from any of the references that I had that I had checked with thank you you're welcome yeah we do uh, we did a very thorough process we had a lot of people involved as you can see from the background from uh, police and fire and public works from all of our, our heavy users uh, and um, we do understand that change is sometimes difficult, but I, there's been a lot of buy-in from people as they look at this as a, as a real eye-opener of a way to do things moving forward. I think this is a great step forward for the city of Muskogee where you're not doing multiple things. I, I know from, from our side, change comes difficult with, with, with anybody, with um, but when you're messing with people's uh, paychecks and time and attendance, um, it, it especially is difficult, but I think this is a great step forward for the city of Muskogee. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further questions or discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coper. Yes. Thank you. Item number four passed. Item number five, please. Consider approval to authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a transition agreement from SFM as a third party contractor to the city of Muskogee for operations of Love Hatbox Sports Complex or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Uh, yes, um, as the city council is well aware, the sports facilities management does operate uh, Love Hatbox Sports Complex on behalf of the city and they have since 2015. Um, what we found is, and what they have found is that some of the assumptions that they made when they came to town, they've not been able to implement. They've not been able to perform as well as they would have liked based off of some of the circumstances that they found here that they did not identify prior to their arrival. Um, we also uh, we realized that they have not been able to do uh, exactly what they proposed to do. And so um, we've had conversations with them and we've got a mutually acceptable way to work this out. We have a 90 day uh, time frame as part of the contract in which we can separate from them in an amicable way and transition operations hopefully as seamlessly as possible. We've had initial discussions about that and what that would look like and it's been very uh, very friendly with them. Uh, they understand that uh, that's not ideal for them. They would like to, to stay but um, given the circumstances I think this is the best way to proceed forward and they've been very helpful in figuring out um, how to transition forward. We do have uh, in our budget this year, uh, money to, to certainly to pay those additional 90 days as we work out with them. But then also, um, if there is needed funding as we uh, resume operations through our parks department, we'll have additional funding available as well. <clears throat> so pardon me, I do recommend that, uh, that we approve uh, this action to go ahead and negotiate and execute uh, that 90 day um, extension or, or uh, termination wind down period. And in doing so, if we're able to, to transition in less than 90 days, we will do that. But this gives us a 90-day window in which we're able to, uh, to, to work out um, a smooth transition for us to resume operations. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? And Mr. Miller, through this transition period, we'll, we'll, our goal with the city of Muskogee will be putting in place the infrastructure to maintain the same level that we've had or better um, to make sure the sports complex is in place. Yeah, the idea is that, that uh, there's been a bar set by SFM about what certainly I think hopefully uh, that we can meet or exceed that bar as far as, uh, as, far as tournaments that we bring to town, as far as customer service, and as far as uh, quality of fields uh, that, that people are playing on. Thank well, you for that clarification because I, I, I just won't. 
uh, just want clarification that we're not just ending the sports complex, that, that we think we can oh. do better than what has been done out there, and we can keep it in-house. Thank you. Yes, and I certainly believe that our Parks Department can do a lot better job than what was g given to us, so I'm excited about that and give it back to our city where it needed to be in the first place, so I appreciate it. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Band. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number five passed. Item number six, please. Consider approval of purchasing 564 livestock pens and storage bins for the Hatbox Barn renovations from the Oklahoma Corrections Industries, a division of the Oklahoma Department of Corrections, or take other necessary action. Mr. Wilkerson. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is an item that is part of our uh, Hatbox slash livestock barn project out at Hatbox. As you're aware, we have a grant uh, from the City of Muskogee Foundation to renovate the hangars, but part of that budget was to buy, purchase uh, portable pens for the livestock. In this case, this is for the small animals, the uh, pigs, hogs, sheep, goats. Um, the most we can put in one of these hangers is approximately 564. We'll also use these pins in the wash barn. Um, the o OCI is a division of the Department of uh, Corrections. They use prison labor to make materials, uh, uh, equipment, and supplies that we've purchased from them in the past, uh, park equipment type things. Um, uh, in this case, these livestock uh, uh, pens are of uh, high quality, uh, comparable to any industry uh, uh, manufacturer of them with a significant cost savings. Um, with the, being part of the state, we're not rec we can buy from OCI without going through the public bid process via the, a state statute that allows us to do that. We do think, though, that there's a significant, maybe 30 percent less of, of a purchase price than to the uh, uh, normal channels of uh, the manufacturing market. So, uh, the, this is a company that uh, has we've we've re reviewed their references. Matter of fact, the question was asked about the warranty. I've already found out that the warranty on the uh, the the structure of the equipment itself is lifetime. So, if anything breaks, they replace it. But the powder coating finish is a 90-day warranty for the powder coating. So. Uh, we would like to recommend that uh, we proceed. Uh, uh, just one more, just clarification is that uh, you know, we're moving the, the livestock barns from uh, the fairgrounds to, to Hatbox. Uh, the, the pins in the old fairgrounds are uh, permanent pin structure, so they couldn't be relocated. They're pretty worn out anyway, but uh, th this is all portable system so that when there's not a livestock event going on and we want to do something else in these buildings that we can uh, break them down, a matter of fact, the part of the purchase price includes bins that the, that the, the, the equipment can be stacked in and stored so that we can move it around with forklifts and, and make it all portable. So uh, uh, we'd like re recommend this uh, approval. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve this item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number six passed. Item number seven, please. Consider approval to purchase the remaining licenses to update the Microsoft Office software suite to version 2016 in the amount of $33,894 from SHI International Corporation or take other necessary action. Mr. Cummins. Mayor Committee. Uh, last year, uh, we purchased approximately half of the licenses to take our Microsoft Office suite from 2007 to the current uh, 2016 um, version of Office. Last year, we purchased about half the licenses, and I'm requesting permission to purchase the other half. Uh, the reason we didn't do it all in one last year is budgetary, um, so that's why we decided to split it into two, two years. Um, once we have that, then we can update the office licenses um, to current, and I recommend approval. Any questions, discussion? For approval. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call, please. 
Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. M Mayor Coburn. Yes. <coughs> Item number seven passed. Item number eight, please. Consider approval of state contract purchase of one VAC Con sewer flusher truck from Frontier Equipment or take other necessary action. Mrs. Swifton. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the committee. We are seeking approval to purchase a new VACON sewer flusher truck to replace the age unit within the Public Works Department. Uh, this will be a state contract purchase price. Uh, you'll notice we did list two prices there. The reason for the two prices are identified as a Tier 3 and Tier 4 engine option. The uh, federal government about 10 years started mandating tighter emission requirements on the diesel engines, and they were identified as Tiers 1 through 4. There is a limited quantity of the Tier 3 engines available. That is the uh, engine we're going after. One, it's approximately $15,000 cheaper, and it has less of the, I want to call it the electronic gadgets to have to maintain. Um, so that is our preferred option. Instead of presenting this with that and then finding out that that engine is no longer available through the week process until next Monday night, if that remaining two engines do sell, we are just presenting it as both options that if we can't get the preferred option, we have to go with option two, which is the tier four. So we're seeking approval to purchase that from Frontier Equipment at a purchase price not to exceed $358,823. <coughs> Be happy to answer any questions if there is any. Why would we not go, I know the little electronic gadgets and stuff, but why would we not go for the better of the, en for the engines? It's not per se better. It just has more emission stuff on it, such as a car has a catalytic converter. Mm -hmm. This has a secondary uh, exhaust um, after treatment system. And it's just more maintenance stuff. It requires the DEF fluid, which can uh, shut you down at times and you have to do the regen. If you're not running for long exterior, it depends on the time for that DEF fluid to run through there. So it's just a little more complicated engine. Simpler is better at this point in this particular thing. Um, so that's why we're trying to go with this as well as the price being cheaper. It's Is it going to be anything that we're going to have to go chase later? No. Okay, so we'll be fine. Correct. We'll get it. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number eight passed. Item number nine, please. Consider approval of receiving donated funds for the months of July 2017 in the amount of $612 and August 2017 in the amount of $1,993 for a total of $2,605 for the city's animal shelter sponsorship program as per the attached list or take other necessary action. Chief. Mr. Chairman, uh, these are the amounts of monies that we received in donations in July and August, $2,605. And of course this goes for our adoption program, spaying and neuter in that program. So I would urge or request that we accept these monies. Move the approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Item number nine passed, and that is the final item on the Finance Committee. And we will now call to, to order the Public Works Committee. Item number one. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of September 19th, 2017. Additions or changes? Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. The motion carries. Item number two. Consider approval of ordinance number 4028A of the City of Muskogee, Chapter 34, Court, Article 2, Procedure, Section 34-56, amending assessment on traffic offenses, providing for repealer, severability, and setting an effective date, or take other necessary action. Chief Eskridge. Mr. Chairman, um, several, some several months ago, we've been, we began a conversation with the manager about developing a sustainable 
uh, economic plan that would allow us to uh, purchase vehicles in a more expeditious manner. Right now, our fleet transitions about every 15 years. Uh, that means that a patrol officer has to drive his car for a good 15 years before we're able to um, finish or, or meet the debt requirement services on the last group of cars that, that uh, we ordered. So what we did is we looked at um, our ordinances. We compared our ordinances to um, Stillwater, Bartlesville, Enid, Owasso, uh, Muskogee County, and we have requested that we add the additional, right now we're getting about $15 per citation, the ones that we're allowed to collect money on, and we want to grow that by $35 to about $50 per citation. And it, this is not a, a, a complete or a final answer to the question of financing cars, but this should produce enough funds that we can assist and reduce our debt requirement in some ways a lot faster on these vehicles. So uh, I have Lieutenant Pickering here. If you have any questions about uh, this ordinance, what it was intended for, and why we want it. So any questions about it? Questions? I think it's time that we put something into place to help them get their fleet up to date and keep it up to date. So therefore, I'd like to move for approval on this. It's much needed and it's got to happen soon. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other thoughts? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Gulley. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you, Thank Chief. You. Item number three. Consider approval of resolution number 2706 of the City of Muskogee providing that all fees, charges, and rates as set out in Appendix A of the Muskogee City Code have been reviewed and submitted to the City Council for adjustment and adoption as set out in Exhibit A and setting an effective date or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, Mr. Chairman and Committee, you we have the table. Uh, logged a lot of hours. <laughs> <laughs> logged a lot of hours on this project. I want to call out especially uh, Darla Bennett and Marcia who both diligently worked with me on this and uh, it's a lot of uh, information that's been added into it so I want to I want to just uh, express my uh, appreciation for both of those employees although Darla's no longer with us but uh, she did work very diligently on this so this is the fine and fee analysis for October 2017 uh, if you will remember back uh, in May of 2017 we had a council retreat at that council retreat packets were uh, put out in that uh, packet there were uh, a lot of information that uh, showed you the comparisons with other communities and it uh, really was a lot of background that the division and department heads did in their respected areas. Uh, there are copies of this available. We printed a couple extra. If you'd like to have those, we've got them available for you. So uh, again, we did discuss all this and there are very few uh, fees in this uh, Schedule A that's before you today that are different than what was in that booklet. So, and I will call those out at the end of this. I'm gonna go through this and then at the end, I'll open it for discussion. Um, we've seen this, I've mentioned this, there were very uh, different uh, versions of Schedule A. We discovered three, we had a web version. Uh, we had one that uh, we're calling Free 2010, which was a version that uh, we were using before John Vincent, uh, when he was our city attorney, redid the the last version of Schedule A. And then uh, we had the city clerk's version. Uh, so again, there was three different ones and we were trying to make sure that everything in those three versions uh, uh, was merged, made sure that it was appropriate for what we've got before you today. So in the fee background, uh, when we looked at it, uh, of course there are thousands of fees and fines. And the only fees with charge or changes since 2011 have been the water, sewer, sanitation, and stormwater. 
and those were put into place again in 2011. Now we did uh, update those in, in this version uh, with the charts, but there are no changes that weren't already previously approved. Uh, we did have some cemetery increases in 2014 and 2016, uh, and when we reviewed that, we stated that we would be bringing that forward to continue to update that to uh, uh, make sure that we were meeting our needs out there. All increases bring us in line with what other cities charge. Our current fees are lower, and in some cases, much lower than other cities. Some of the fees haven't been increased since the 1970s, and fee increases are primarily for services the city provides. And I'm gonna, I wanna state that one more time. This is service fees that we're looking at increasing today. Uh, Appendix A, we've got planning and zoning, building constructions. Uh, with the building inspections part, fees haven't been raised in some cases since 1994, uh, which brings us in line with what other cities charge. Uh, would make uh, inspections self-sufficient, not subsidized by taxpayers, only by those receiving services. And I'm gonna mention that several times. That's one of the uh, intents of raising these is so that, uh, that we are more self-sufficient. And to the business regulations, there's no changes in Schedule A to that. In the building and building regulations, we increased four and we removed eight. And again, this would make inspection self-sufficient, not subsidized by taxpayers, only by those receiving the services. In the building construction and housing uh, section, and by the way, if you're uh, looking at your section, the ones that are in there that were uh, raised are uh, in yellow. If you look at yours, and I'll get back to that in a minute. So the increased fees for uh, building construction and housing was 36 fees that were increased and we removed two. All increases still comparable or lower than other cities. Again, would make inspections self-sufficient and not subsidized by the taxpayer, only by those receiving the services. In the cemetery, and uh, I will call out that in the cemetery is one area where we did make some uh, significant changes uh, from when we addressed this um, uh, at the council retreat and then when we met individually with you, we did make some changes. Uh, we visited with uh, Councilman Kale and uh, we actually lowered quite a few of them uh, and increased. Those are in your packet and those are called out uh, in, the, in the highlighted colors. <coughs> Fire prevention and protection, we did add commercial open burn permit for $60. And today, uh, Fire Chief uh, did point out to Marsh and I, we missed one on the Knox box. So there's an additional one in the fire section for $35, and I'll come back to that. In parks and recreation, and I wanna thank Brooke Hall, she worked real uh, well with uh, Darla on this and myself. Uh, we increased 32 fees, uh, added 16 new fees, and we removed 28. All increases still comparable or lower than other cities. <coughs> These increases will help to sustain maintenance and operation and provide for future <coughs> improvements in the parks area. In the streets and sidewalks and other public places, we removed the fee for purchase and installation of concrete culvert pipe per foot. Uh, we did change the charge for backfilling replacement repair and site cleanup for street utility work. If you'll look in that section, the way uh, we wrote that is that the contractor is now responsible for replacement and repair of the street and for the traffic control, or they can pay the city uh, for the uh, exact cost. So we put exact, actual costs by city. So if they want to take it, they've got two options. Uh, in the utilities, again, uh, we only updated the water rates, the sewer rates, and the commercial pickup charges. This, uh, all the fees and, and uh, changes that we made, uh, we estimate that to, to gain somewhere around 200,000 per year. Most all of that revenue will go to general fund or to a uh, individual enterprise fund. Uh, I wanna call out to you the ones that we did add that uh, are different than what's in your packet. Um, a couple of them were just simply uh, word changes. Uh, starting with the, uh, the fire services area, we did add Knox box, key box registration. Uh, that is uh, appropriate with the uh, ordinance 42-64, and there will be a $35 uh, charge for that. Uh, under the park and rec recreation part, we uh, add, uh, added a park shelter rental uh, for $30 for three hour increments. That's one we just simply overlooked. Um, 
in the park area also under the swim and fitness area there's a, a section in it that says annual we only added the words paid in full so there were no no changes to the uh, amounts uh, under additional family corporate members uh, we added the word corporate uh, so that was just a word change under streets and sidewalks we did add one under right of right of way and renaming we added two columns right of way closure it's two hundred dollars plus cost of notice and the renaming of a street two hundred dollars plus cost of notice and that is not the historical renaming of a street that's the renaming of a street if you were to change the actual name so those are the only differences that are uh, uh, in your packets again we have gone through these fees with you several times uh, very few changes from what you have heard previously uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions but we do as staff recommend approval move for approval second I have a motion and a second any discussion uh, I'd, I'd like to offer a word of thanks to staff uh, there was quite a bit of effort put into this uh, I like the idea of uh, pay for your services uh, I'm surprised that we let it go so long to have the taxpayers subsidize service type fees and uh, everybody doing the research and to try to get in line and in most cases below what other c cities are doing uh, I'm real appreciative and thankful for all the hard work and effort they put into this and and uh, it pleases me to see a, a, a little bit of fairness in uh, what we're doing here very good I would like to just continue the same thing. You know, I, I, at the retreat, um, I was really blown away by the packet that we were provided by staff, and I appreciate the leadership of Mike Miller uh, giving us that. It wasn't. It was really a team that pulled that packet together, and and said this is what we would like to look at. I think it was visionary. Um, I appreciate Mike Stewart taking that baton and continuing with that team effort. Of uh, you know, it would have been easy to just say we're raising fees uh, that's not what was happened that, that's not what took place it really took the attorney's office the secretary's office it took a full team effort mm -hmm. to look at everything get everything in line uh, to remove uh, sections to put sections to back together um, I mean this was truly a team effort to get everything in line um, and, and and do it right and uh, again, I'd just like to say thank you to really a, a team effort from a visionary standpoint to pulling it all together and making it right. Uh, so again, I, I think another time that our city is just moving forward in the right direction. Thank you, staff. Any other comments? I'm sure I'm be recognized. Yes, sir. Mr. Stewart, on those street signs, on the honor area with street signs, are they, what's the price of those now? Ones you oh, put over the street. The, yeah, those are $125 per sign, okay. and they have not changed. Okay. I'll fall back over you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions or discussion? I have a motion and a second. Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. No. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. I'm number four consider approval of an amended affirmative action plan of the city of Muskogee Oklahoma for fiscal year 2017 2018 council policy 3-1-1 or take other necessary action Ms. Plunkett Mr. Chair members of the committee this is our annual update to the affirmative action policy um, the reason why this policy is coming um, later than normal is because we had a committee that was established in the police department um, to um, get some insight on their diverse recruiting. Um, we have um, come up with a police hiring plan within that department. Um, that's been incorporated into this policy and I was waiting on that information to place that in here. So that's the delay. I normally don't come before you this late, um, but I did want to um, advise that that was the reason for this. Um, of course, with this annual update, um, normal changes as always, we've updated the statistical information in here. Um, we changed a few of the job categories due to EEO4 guidance, um, <coughs> updated the current employee information for the current fiscal year, um, added the PD diversity committee information as well, um, and then also I've made a change to the board members um, due to the late um, Cassandra Gaines 
um, not being on the committee anymore. I'm happy to answer any questions and recommend approval. I guess I was wondering, approval. Kelly, did you go out uh, in the community and get advice about the diversity from different members? Did y'all have a team like that? I thought you did. We have the police department recruiting, um, and then there's also a committee that's established. If we have any, uh, any EEO concerns within the city, um, that board will meet to decide on those, those concerns. Um, but in regards to the recruiting, the only board that was set up for that was the police department. And then the fire department had one as well last year, um, but I can't speak to their, their meeting schedules. I can speak to the police department because I was involved in those. Thank you. And the police department, Board, if I'm recalling correctly, that's the one that we had been gathering on. It was it was a very diverse yes, sir. committee. <clears throat> that's correct. Um, that that met diligently to be certain that uh, everything could be done to do everything we could to recruit the broadest spectrum of people to make the best reflection of the community. That's correct. And we again, um, I wrote a complete plan for the police department for their hiring, and then I've incorporated a lot of that in this policy as well. Move for approval. I already have a motion. Second. Oh. Second. Second. I have a motion and second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Jenny Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Item number five. Consider approval of accepting the proposal for new gen strategies and solutions for consulting services to conduct a fully automated solid waste collection study and authorize the city manager to negotiate and execute a contract for the same <clears throat> or take other necessary action. Mr. Riley, I see Mr. Stewart's keep catch your seat warm for you. Yeah, did. That was nice of you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee, uh, money was set aside this year's budget to uh, do a study um, looking into fully automated trash collection. Um, and we put together a committee, uh, had two, two proposals come in. The committee interviewed both, both consultants and um, selected uh, new gen strategies and solutions to do the study. Um, again, this is just a study to, to, to come up with the, the cost of service now, the cost of service it, with the changes that we do decide to make, if we, may, if we decide to make any and um, that there will be more meetings and discussions with council as far as, as what, um, what, what decisions we do make as far as changing trucks and that type of thing. And, um, but, but this authorizes um, the city manager to negotiate a contract with, with New Gen Solutions to, to start the study. Um, the first phase, which will be the cost of, the cost of service study, will uh, be about a, a three-month project. So mm -hmm. we'll be coming back with, with uh, information after that. Uh, I've got a question. Yeah. I've <coughs> lived in a community where they uh, utilized the, the tools and, and trash collection that we're talking about here, and it seemed to work just fine. Have we reached out to communities that have changed to the automatic automated trash pickup system and quiz them at all about their happiness or unhappiness or yeah we've talked to some and then the consultant selected has, has done cities like Norman and Edmond Stillwater um, so so they they're versed in, in how these things have gone and the questions that will come up and those those will all be addressed with that and I know we started off talking about this right before you came. Ha, ha, is there anyone up here that has had a, a conversation with a city? Mm -hmm. Would somebody like yes. to speak to well, that? Well, I mean, you have. Now I've been involved in, in the city that, that did, went through this when I was, I was working for another city. So, okay. So I'm, I'm very aware of all the, yeah. the issues that come up. Uh, at this time... Uh, do you think it a net positive? You think it's oh. worthy endeavor? Oh yes, I think so. I think once it was done, I mean, there were, there's obviously some headaches and things you go through, but once it's done, it, it's much better service. Yeah, great. That's what I was looking yeah, for. Mr. Kale, I've talked to other other cities and that have done it, and there there are not a lot of cities that are that have done it and are going back. Uh, for instance, uh, that have regretted their decision and moved you know away from the automated. Right. So. 
That's that I'm answers not, my not, question. I'm not sure that it's. You know, we haven't made a decision whether that's a solution for our city at this time, but that's the feedback we've gotten from other cities. From and, from from my perspective, it uh, it seemed like the right thing to do, but mine was just as a citizen watching some crazy machine do everything without any men, and and I wondered. You know, is 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 there are there savings and and uh, I can see a lot of the obvious benefits. You know, not being out in cold and slippery and cold weather and working and but but then there are negatives as as there are with everything. But uh, I'm quite interested to to hear more about it. Yeah, yeah. The reason we're doing it at this time is that that we'll hopefully have information back that as we make our budget for next fiscal year. We'll have an opportunity to implement any changes if they're recommended and if the council so feels that that's the direction we need to head. Thank you. Thanks. I guess my question is, Mike, we are Greg, you weren't here, but we've tried this once before and we decided that what we weren't quite the city to, to have automated systems. And I'd just kind of like to review what was wrong the last time just for other people so unless we're talking about a new piece of equipment when we tried it before unfortunately we are the ones that went backwards mm -hmm. and i just kind of like for us to review to people going this is why we think the changes in technology are better or worse or whatever so when we uh, looked at it before we bought <coughs> one truck mm -hmm. and the intent was to try to discover what we needed how we needed to move forward we didn't go backwards we just simply ran that truck till its livelihood was completed and uh, then we, our choice was, do we go fully automated or not? What we did discover was that that was not the truck course. It was too big a wheelbase. There was areas where it was hard to get in and out of. So we did learn a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still, I still feel automation is the way to go, okay. but uh, uh, we've got to do some studies on it. We need to make sure it's fiscally uh, the smart way to go. And uh, I, I believe that, but uh, that's <coughs> the purpose of the study. Okay, and that's, I just want to let people know that we have tried it before, and they, so if they we, want to know why we're doing this. When, doing how long study. ago was this, Mr. Gulley? Oh, seven years ago, eight years ago? Uh, yeah, maybe it nine? might even have been ten, and we maybe. ran that truck for about five, six years. It was a crane carrier. It was a tandem axle. It was about a 30-yard truck, and if you'll think our trucks now are 20 yards, um, and it was just a, a, a truck that was too big for us. It uh, had issues at the landfill, but we learned a tremendous amount. Okay. So we're taking a lot of knowledge into uh, this study, and uh, I really feel like this is the right way to go. So answer any other questions if you need me. And I, want, I only bring that up mostly just let people know we've tried it, and we're looking at it again. We think that was still the right, right piece to go. So in case somebody else goes, well, didn't we do this before? What kind of information are we going to get from this study? It, it, the initial phase will give, give us the cost of service, basically what we pay right now uh, per customer or what the, city, what the cost is to the city and what, it will, what we can get to. And I, I envision a laundry list of things that, that, you know, we do this, this is what the cost of service is. You do, you know, the different pickups that we do. But um, ultimately, it, it's basically a, a financial study of, of what's there. But once we make decisions off of that, then we go into the phases of selecting trucks and routing and that type of thing. So are we looking at trying to do the same amount with, I know that you haven't got the study back. You know, I, I'm going to be all open and honest with you. I hate studies. Right. It seems like we've done a lot of studies up here and we've never fulfilled. We looked at them and we go, oh, yeah, we'd love to do that, but we don't do it. Uh, before I like to vote yes on how much, uh, this study's going to cost and all that kind of stuff. It, it just, it drives me crazy that we're always doing studies about stuff. And for one reason or another, we spend a lot of money on them and, doesn't, and it doesn't help us get over the hump. But I just kind of wanted to know what it was, what we're going to try to get out of this. And because the first thing I think of is when we go out fully automated trash trucks, probably half of our sanitation department's going to be cut in half because all you need then is a driver to function that, that truck and to pick up your trash. I start thinking of people's jobs and things like that as well. And it better be a real good study is all I got to say. And, and, okay. and echoing what Mr. Hall says, and I agree with him on a study for everything, but if this is what I think it is, 
and we have reached out and done a little bit of exploring with other cities and this study just takes our city into account with their knowledge of how it's worked in other cities and says well we're a little different because of this and this and so here's the here's the particulars on if you do this here's how it's going to work out it's easier for me to stomach a study that's honing down on what we're looking at than a study if we should even do what it is that we're thinking about yeah. so I'm a big fan of reaching out and, and educating ourselves all that we can and then if we're doing a accounting type study or what have you to to hone down on exactly how many of this we have and how many of that and what it's going to take and what our route is and everything that's more that's easier for me to stomach as well well, I want I want some definites in there because I'd like to see that because I don't want any more of these studies where they're in generalized. So that's what I'm after. The, the initial part of this study, the, the consultant is actually going to be in the field, riding with our guys, um, seeing how we do it, and, and seeing our specific situations. So so that when we look at different trucks and things, they'll they'll have an idea of what what Muskogee needs because they've been out on the routes with us. Yeah. And I think it's appropriate to have a study because these trash trucks are extremely expensive. Yeah. And, um, Mr. Miller, I guess my question is, is we're going to have a motion to, for you to negotiate. Will we come back and approve that contract, or at that point in time, will you be able, according to this motion, we're authorizing you to go ahead and, and agree to the study no matter what? The cost? Yeah, the, the uh the the proposal is to negotiate and execute the contract so that we're not coming back because we we okay. there's a limited number of consultants we've reviewed them um, and we, the idea of negotiating it is to get a, uh, as good a deal as possible which we're allowed to do um, through this process um, and it, what it does is it, it gives us the information do we want to even but do we want to buy a single automated truck or not do we and and gives us a, a platform to make that decision off of. Um, I think whatever conclusion we come to, we're going to have good information to come to it with. And so that's really what I'm looking for out of this, out of this study. Okay. Now, Greg, my, my understanding is this was a budgeted item for this, yes, for this study. And we do want to you know, understand also this is one of our highest workmen compensation areas and one of our highest loss areas also with our employees. So anything that we can look at to, to better serve our community and make it safer for employees too but uh, I, I think it's really good that we we at least look at options and again look at the future of how we can move our community forward um, and and we definitely don't want to look at purchase of a trash truck and the expense of a trash truck without the possibility of saying you know is it would it work for us or would it not work yeah. for us uh, I think this is a good investment in a study before you purchase a trash truck okay mr. Riley do you have some inclination based on your experience in other cities and what you've seen here that the study is likely to substantiate our need to do things differently than the way we're doing it now based on my knowledge and what I've seen of it the, the study is going to show that it's there will be less cost <coughs> to the city and to, um, to move to fully automated right? because <coughs> That's typically what, what happens in, in most cities when they take this step. When you say less cost, are we talking the initial cost is going to cost us more because we're going to have to buy the truck and it's going to have to yeah. be automated. So, I mean, you caught me when you said less cost. I'm going, uh -uh, there is no way automation is going to be less. But the overall, over time, you're talking about less. Right. We're talking okay. about over, over a period of time that with the, the worker, with the worker's, workers comp and the less employees and ultimately it works out to less cost yeah. we, and we always have to look at the what the trucks bring uh, cost us over their over their life regardless of whether they're the, uh, the automated or the the current trucks that we have yeah. and the point of the the latter stages of the study will be to, to to do some serious routing studies and things so that we're most very efficient in how we pick up get to the landfill and back out under routes and, and that that will be a lot of savings there too any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, may I be recognized? Yes, sir. I remember one day me and Mr. Miller went out on the trash route. 
And we had a good time. It was an interesting experience riding on the back. I like to. It was Mr. driving. Yeah, you better you better believe it. If me and Mr. Van were out on a trash route, it was an interesting experience. Yeah, I don't have a video of that. Hmm. We got one. Do you? <laughs> we do. We I'm do. not surprised. <laughs> well, anyway, my point is, I'm kind of like Council Hall. <laughs> on for the employees, you know, I'm just curious about what's going to happen to them. You know, we'll get this automated stuff. And also, one thing I noticed when we was out there on the trash truck is, like, they dumped it, you know, we dumped the trash in the truck. And then, but you have all these bags and stuff laying around with the employees throw on the truck. Now, is that automatic <clears throat> going to do that? Well, that's, that's one of the, the growing pains we'll, have, we'll study and determine, you know, whether we have to go to additional cans or you know, the, the other issues are the um, the um, handicapped people pick up where we actually go to the house and bring the can down and dump it and all those issues will be part of the study as to, sure. as to how we handle that yeah that's a very good question and those are those are issues that again that's what part of what you look at over this period of time um, one thing i want to say about regarding employees that um, and, and head count, right? You were talking about are people going to lose their jobs? And for, for, for better or for worse, this is our hardest job to fill at the city of Muskogee. And you can probably imagine why, that in, uh, here in December, in a couple of months, it's going to be hard to get somebody to ride around on the back of that truck when it's 20 degrees at 7 a.m. in the morning. And, and I admire the guys that do it, and we've got guys that have done it a long time, and I'm very, very proud of those guys. But, um, we we never have a full complement of people as it is if we if we ever were to make a change it would be improving the working conditions for the uh, because they're a lot of times on a rotation yep. basis they're inside half the day outside half the day so we're going to improve the working conditions for the ones that are able to stay um, and that do stay on long for a long time uh, and um, through because of the high turnover that we have uh, that that it would not take long for us to 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 through attrition reach the point where we would need to be if we had lower staff so that uh, the intention is if we ever get there that that we're going to make things better for our employees it, it, is this also a position that is a high injury risk position yes yes it is it's, it is our uh, mr johnson was correct it is our uh, this area is our highest area where we um, have workers comp claims one thing I can say that day when me and Mr. Miller went out, you, the uh, citizens here in Muskogee, they bring you out water, cookies, mm -hmm. different things. This surprised me. I, I called them in advance, let them know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Kitt, Councilman Kale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'll turn the floor back out over to you, Mr. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Any other comments? Do I hear a motion? <laughs> Move for approval. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other thoughts? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully? Yes. Janie Boydston? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? No. Dan Hall? No. Mayor Coburn? Yes. And the motion carries. Uh, that was our last agenda item. I have one citizen wishing to speak to this committee, Mr. Van. I think you know the routine of the three minutes and your name and address. I think you know the routine. Not for certain. <laughs> I revenge 4338 Columbus Street. The reason I'm here today is the Thursday is the state of the city, and I come every year, I, and the mayor always gives the state of the city. So, the mayor, I'm going to give you your state of the city today. I think the state of the city is still you do it wrong. In the first place, you, the employees have to pay to go to our own stuff. We work every day as a councilman up here, do a free of charge. But we charge our employees $25 a piece to go to this state of the city. The Civic Center is gay free. That's wrong. I don't think the Civic Center should be gave to the chamber free of charge. And it's just, uh, it's just definitely wrong. I go, I went to OML, and I asked some people in OML how they do different things up there with their state of the city. But the one thing I really go to is the national leader cities. And what I ask them about the chamber uh, doing the state of the city and charging and using it as a fundraiser. Uh, they said they ain't never heard of such nonsense. I mean, they asked people from all over the country. And to me, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll never be able to go to the state of the city because I'm not going to any state of the city that's a private organization that you get up there and talk and they make money off your, your speech and the things we do here in the city of Muskogee. That's just definitely wrong. And I'll, nev I'll never go. And the reason I won't go is because the people that put me in that seat, they can't go because it's a private health organization. Even the people in Oklahoma, it's probably one city I check with, they have the same 
thing. They use the state of the city as a fundraiser. But other than that, this state of the city fundraiser stuff is a bunch of nonsense. And there'll always be a bunch of nonsense. You said that you know we can have two or you can do two. We shouldn't have to do two. They're gonna do the chamber, they're gonna do the state of the city on the arena floor, eleven thirty in the day when everybody's working, but all the arena's gonna be completely empty. No seats up there, I mean all the seats up there is empty. When they could do it in the evening time and let people come. You know, it's just about it's just about a dinner and it's about to get getting together with your suits and everything all looking good. But like I say, we do more of that up here. Because like I said, we work for free, and we get out every day and do things for our, our community, all of us. But we got to give the chamber. The chamber shouldn't have to have nobody uh, give them a fundraiser. Chamber people, they have money. There are business people at the chamber. You don't need to have a fundraiser for them. I mean, they're not, are they feeding the hungry here? Are they housing the hungry? You tell me something really, really positive and good they're doing with that money that they raise that we have to, that y'all have to uh, put out to it. That's, it's ridiculous. So that's, that's my spiel. And like I say, every time, you know, even if I'm not a councilman, every time, time comes the time to say to the city, I'll disagree to that every time. Because like I said, I hope you get to go to the National League of Cities this year, Mr. Mr. Mayor, and everybody up there, and see, see how other people think about what this nonsense, what we do here in Muskogee, country town in Muskogee, Oklahoma, funding the state of the city through our hard work. So I appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Seeing that no other citizens wish to address this committee, we are adjourned. We will now call to order the special call meeting of the Skokie City Council. Roll call, please. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Here. Janie Boydston. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Mayor Copeland. Here. Item 1A. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307C10, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, Consider convening an executive session for the purpose of conferring on matters pertaining to economic development within the Northwest Corridor of the City of Muskogee and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Now consider a uh, executive session motion. So moved. Second. second. A motion and a second. Any comment or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Yes. Janie Boydston. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Mayor Copeland. Yes. Motion carries. We'll now consider ourselves in executive session. Now reconvene from executive session. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. Deputy Mayor James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. Janie Boydston. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Mr. Tucker, regarding mm -hmm. item 1A. Uh, pursuant to Section 307C10, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session uh, to discuss matters pertaining to economic development within the Northwest Corridor of the City of Muskogee. After being fully briefed on a proposed project, staff has been given necessary direction and no further action is required at this time. Mayor? That completes our agenda. That's the only agenda item we have. Thank you.